I got a word for somebody this morning. I got a word for many people this morning. Come on, somebody. Let's get excited. The title of my message this morning, if you like titles, sometimes I have hard times titling it because when I start preaching, it changes. So for now, the message title is The Wait is Over. The wait is over. I, I don't know who's been going through a long wait. I believe many of us have been going through. It seemed like a long wait. It seemed like years of waiting. Get ready because God says we're in this season of acceleration. And he said to announce to you the wait is over. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want you to turn in your Bibles. Let's go to John the fifth chapter. <clears throat> John chapter 5. John chapter 5, and we're going to start reading with verse 1. And it says this, After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem, by the sheep market, a pool, which is called in the Hebrew, tongue Bethesda. Having five porches. Now, I want to stop right there because the Hebrew word Bethesda means house of mercy or house of grace. In the Hebrew and Aramaic, it could also mean shame or disgrace. Keep that in mind. House of mercy, house of grace, or shame and disgrace. And it says having five porches. Now, we know the number five. What does it represent? Grace and favor. I don't know who needs favor this morning, but I hear the Lord. Come on. He just prophesied about the mantle of favor being released on your life. He said new grace, new favor, new grace, new favor. And, and Bethesda, they come. He, Jesus comes to the house of Bethesda or, or, or to the town of Bethesda. And this place had five porches, which means grace and favor. Verse 3. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk of blind halt withered waiting for the moving of the water now in my bible i underlined and highlighted waiting because some of you have been in the wait of your life some of you have been in the waiting season see that's where the enemy gets a lot of us is in the waiting season why does he get a lot of us there? Because we get tired. Why does he trap a lot of people there? Because we get tired and then we start trying to look for other things to fill the void and we're in the wait. But I'm telling you in the waiting season is when you're going to see the miracle. It's when you're going to see a breakthrough. See how you wait is as important as how you wait. If you wait with expectation or if you wait with anger I'm going to touch on it this morning because you need to hear it. It, it there's so many times that I've waited with anger I'm just going to be real this morning there have been times I've been in the wait and I'm like God this this isn't fair somebody else that didn't wait as long as I've waited and I know their life Now, now, I, I know y'all are looking super spiritual, but I'm going to be real this morning because I, I'm like, I, I get aggravated sometimes. And I'm like, God, I'm fasting. I'm praying. I'm standing. I've waited. I've blessed you in the way. And this joker over here. Y'all are looking spiritual this morning. Wow. How could he say that? We need to pray for Pastor Andrew this morning. Please do pray for me. I need it. Yes, I absolutely need it. But have you ever thought to yourself, why? Why? I don't even have to finish that. Just why? It's in the waiting that you receive breakthrough or miracles. And some of us, I hear the Lord say today, you're moving out of the waiting and into the manifestation. You're moving out of the promise into the 
embracing the manifestation of the word hallelujah some of y'all are looking at me like you don't believe it you don't have to receive it but for me and my house we're going to receive it in jesus name and the word says that many now notice the description of the people here in these lay a great multitude of impotent folk of blind halt withered waiting for the moving of the water for verse 4 for an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then was first after the troubling of the water, after the troubling of the water stepped in, was made whole of whatever disease he had. Now, verse 4, I want to read to you in the amplified version uh, because it, it was powerful to me. For an angel of the Lord went down into the pool at appointed seasons and stirred up the water. The first one to go in after the water was stirred was healed of his disease. Now, I was reading this the other day, and I called my mother, and I was talking with her because she studies the word, she breathes the word, she lives the word. So I was calling her, and I was, I was talking to her about this scripture and I was saying, you know, I was reading this story today, and it was just so interesting to me that the angel would come. Why do you think God sent an angel and would uh, stir up the waters, and the first one in would receive a miracle? But you had all those hundreds of people that were sick, and they only had one that would get healed. And we were talking about that, and she said to me, Andrew, you know, there there are stirring angels that are sent on assignment to stir up environments, to stir up waters. And when she said that, it hit my spirit. And the Lord spoke to me and said, I am sending this morning, <laughs> this morning to Ram Church. I'm sending ministering angels to stir up the waters of revival. I'm stirring up the waters of awakening. I'm stirring up the waters of miracles. I'm stirring up the waters of breakthrough. Some of y'all are looking at me right now. Those of you that, that can discern the angels of the Lord, that stirring up the waters, you're about to receive a breakthrough through like you have never experienced in your life but for those of you that don't sense the glory of the Lord you will sit there and go another day another week just like it was I'm telling you there is a stirring in the atmosphere and I love in the amplified version that it says came down into the pool at appointed seasons and stirred up I believe this morning it's your appointed season Hear me, I'm going to talk to somebody online too. I believe today is your appointed season. Those of you in this room, I believe today it's your appointed season. I believe God has divinely ordered you to be here. You didn't stumble in here by accident. You didn't just say, oh, I think I'll come. No, God sent you here for a divine assignment to announce to you it's an appointed season. And you are stepping in. Why? Because the waters have been stirred. And I believe there's some people in this room and watching online that can discern the timing of the Lord and say I, I discern the waters are being stirred the waters are being troubled and I'm going to step into what God has promised but we were talking and I said you know I wonder why God only allowed one person to step in and receive the miracle and the further I, th I thought about it we were talking about it the further we started thinking about it this was before Jesus died on the cross. So basically, this was under the law. Only one person, but out of his great mercy, he allowed one person to receive their miracle. But now we're under the new covenant. Somebody say new covenant. <laughs> Jesus paid the price with the healing of a... Oh, I'll get there in just a second. Let's, let's break some of this text down. See, I'm excited this morning because I believe there's miracles in the room. I said, I believe there's miracles of breakthrough. I believe there's breakthrough in this room. But it says, for an angel went down in a certain season into the pool and troubled the waters. Now, I wrote about this uh, text in my book, The Triple Threat Anointing. And I thought to myself, why? Man, if that was me and I needed a miracle, I think I would have sat on the edge of the pool 
day and night with my feet in the water. And as soon as I saw that angel, I'd be jumping in. Halt, withered, whatever. You know, I mean, what? And, but then I did some more study, and it was believed that the angel could not be seen. So the people had to discern when the water was being troubled. They had to discern when the water was being stirred up. And see, that's why we see today, even though Jesus and we're living under the new covenant, that's why some people don't receive miracles and breakthroughs. And, and, and see, they can come into this environment and not be changed by God's presence because they're unable to discern the waters are being stirred. See, God has given you an invitation that you can jump on in to your breakthrough, jump on in to your miracle, jump on in because the water is stirred. And he began to speak to me this week. And he said, they could not discern the troubling of the waters. So it would have done no good for that man who was uh, 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 sick for 38 years, we, we, we later find out, to just hang out at the edge of the pool. Because every time I've read this, I just thought, man, I would live at the edge. And I'd just roll myself over when I saw that angel. I mean, I, I dare somebody to try to beat me. <laughs> Y'all think I'm sweet. I am sweet. <laughs> But, but, but when I also have, when I'm believing God for a breakthrough and a miracle, I don't have time to be, I don't have time to play games. Come on, when you're desperate for God, you don't have time to play games. That's why when they criticize and say, why you got to be so loud? And I've had people tell me, you know, your church would grow so much more if you just tone it down just a little bit. And I said, I, I can't tone it. In fact, I'm going to tone it up in Jesus' name. I, I, I th you want me to be a little more calm and just stand and smile? I'm going to lay hands on the sick. I'm going to cast out devils. Come on, we don't have time to play games. I never see the book of Acts where they tone down the gospel. I never saw Jesus tone down the gospel to make it palatable for everybody. Oh, I don't want to offend you, so I'm just going to, you might be okay, but why don't you change? Why don't you just, no, he was saying you're in sin and you need to repent. See, <laughs> I hope y'all are getting this as much as I'm getting this because I'm preaching to myself as much as I'm preaching to y'all. But, but it, it says they were waiting. He was waiting for the moving of the water. And at a certain season or a set appointed time, come on, that's a Kairos moment. That's a set appointed time on God's calendar. See, I know, I heard the Spirit of the Lord saying that some of you came in here not for a Kronos moment, which means a chronological time, but you have come in here for a set time. There's a set time on God's calendar for breakthrough. There's a set time on God's calendar for healing. There's a set appointed time for deliverance. I wish somebody would help me in this room see I believe that you have come in for an appointed time why because the waters of God are being troubled they're being stirred there's a dam that's breaking in the spirit and he is saying whosoever will come drink your fill you don't have to thirst again now if you look if you look in the previous chapter it talks about the woman who was at the well and he, she said Jesus said to her if you drink from this well, you'll thirst again. But if you drink of the water that I have, you will never thirst again. See, I believe that water is being stirred, the living water of God. And so the Bible tells us, now let's look at it together, that it was a set appointed time, a certain season into the pool. And the troubled and troubled the water. Whosoever, verse 4. Then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he saith unto him, Will thou be made whole? Now, we look at that. And I don't know about you, but I'm thinking, okay, this man's had an infirmity for 38 years. And you're saying, will you be made whole? Have you all ever thought about that? I'd be like, yes. Hallelujah. But there's some people that get comfortable in their affliction. There's some people, and we dealt with it this morning, that get comfortable 
with an orphan spirit of being rejected. They get comfortable being sick. Maybe they get attention being sick. Maybe, maybe they get uh, 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 just people doting over them for being sick. And so it's like, you know, I'll never forget. I was having a healing line and I went to pray for someone. I'm thinking, you're in the healing line, so you want healing. So I'm going to pray for them. Come on. And I'm going to lay hands on them. They, they stop me. Now, usually I don't have time to talk when I'm in a prayer line because I'm just like, do, 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 do. But they stopped me. They held on to my hands. And I said, what, you, what do you need, sister? And, and they said, I don't want to be all the way whole. I just want healing in this I won't even mention, but this part of my body. And I said, God wants to make you whole. His will is to make you whole. No, 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 no. And I, and I, was, I could, could, didn't have time to ask her why. But I thought to myself, you know what? I said, well, I'm going to skip praying for you because there's faith up here for wholeness. And so I didn't pray. See, you got to be careful who you lay hands on. you got to make sure they have. I believe that if I would have went ahead and prayed for her halfway healing, I believe the anointing probably would have been drained at that moment. And then the rest of the people wouldn't have received their miracle. Why? Because the, 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 the waters of healing were already stirred up, and she chose not to get in. <laughs> oh, See, this is preaching, prophesying, and teaching in, in all in one today. And it says that, that, that he said when the waters were stirred, and he says, he asked him, wilt thou be made whole? Now notice the word whole there. Somebody say whole. Verse 7, the impotent man answered him saying, sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. And while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Now, I love this because I can relate to this man. Anybody else this morning? We're full of excuses. Let me see past the lights. We're full of excuses. I told the Lord one day I was praying. And I was saying, God... You know, I was asking the Lord for this and asking the Lord to move and, and to heal the sick and, and do all of these things. And I was praying and, and, you know, I was coming up with all these excuses of why. Well, this didn't happen because this person didn't help me or this happened because if I didn't have to deal with this situation or, or deal with this. Come on, anybody, anybody ever have any excuses this morning? And I started with my whole list of excuses and I heard him say, enough's enough. I'm the same yesterday, today, forever. And he said, I'm a rewarder of those that diligently seek me. He said to you this morning, I'm going to give you the same word he gave me, no more excuses. No more excuses. Well, every time I'm trying to get there, somebody steps down and gets in the pool before me. Uh, I've tried, God. Come on, I've tried to be blessed in my finances. I, I've tried to live for God, but you don't understand. Every time Sister Sue comes around, she leads me into the path of temptation. Get delivered from evil in Jesus' name. Come on, you got to cut off some. How desperate are you? How des are you? Are you satisfied with hanging around the pool and not getting in the waters when they're stirred? Are you satisfied with staying around some people that are revived but not getting? Come on, I have a new chapter in my new book. Let me just plug it right here. It comes out on Tuesday. I want every one of you to go to Amazon.com today after the service. Not right now, after the service, and buy breaking in the spirit of Delilah because it's going to set you free. It's number three. I want it to go to number one in Jesus name. So y'all got to go buy it after the service this morning. But, but I write about being cold to the fire because some people are satisfied with being around the fire, but don't want the fire of God in them. This man was satisfied with being around the troubled waters, but he was so full of excuses that he was around the people who were halt, withered, sick, and, and he got so used to that, that became who his, who, who his identity, who he was. And so Jesus comes to him after 38 years and says, will thou be made whole? And in other words, will you be made whole? 
Do you want to be made whole? Now, for us, that seems like an obvious question. But let's make it personable to ourselves. Do you want your marriage to be whole? Do you want your body to be whole? Are you ready to lose your, your income for some people that have a sickness that you've been receiving income from? Or, or, or do you want to still just live on that little... Come on, how desperate are you? Oh, I'm not preaching against that. I know there's people that need help. I, I get that. I understand that. But I'm saying, if God says, do you, wanna, do you want that more than you want God? I believe he's asking us the question this morning. Do we want this or that more than we want him? Because the waters of revival are being stirred. The revive the waters of awakening are being stirred. The waters of healing are being stirred. The waters of breakthrough are being stirred. And the men, I can picture this conversation that Jesus has on the Sabbath at the pool. I did a study yesterday. And it says the site was discovered in 1888. And I won't even try to attempt the name that discovered it, but just believe me. And it says prior to this, scholars did not think the pools of Bethesda existed. Had no idea. The pool is located below the surface. That is why the site took so long to discover. The pools were originally associate, associated with healing but recently, archaeologists discovered the pools were also of purification bath. So it was built with two pools. Now, this isn't the word, so this is history. It was built with two pools. One was for a bath that uh, the, the healing and the water would flow down into the second pool. It was separated by a wall. One was for a bath. One was for healing. And so uh, it was thought that this was not accurate in Scripture. But I'm telling you, every word proves true in the Bible. Don't try to explain it away. Don't try to say, well, you know, I don't know. about." No, I'm telling you, history will back up the word of God. And so uh, these pools were the pool of Bethesda or the pool of grace or kindness. The house of mercy or house of grace was in Bethesda. Now, Bethesda means house of mercy or house of grace. And Jesus comes walking up and he sees one man that had been sick for 38 years. Hanging out at the pool, waiting for the waters to be troubled. And Jesus says to him, wilt thou be made whole? And then he gives him his list of excuses like we do. Come on. Well, I just can't. Little Tommy's got a baseball game today. I'm sorry. I, 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 I can't pray to this morning. That's just too early to get up and pray. I'm, I'm I'll make it through about halfway through the worship, I think. Maybe. I might watch online. And thank you for joining us this morning. <laughs> I, I love you guys. Come on, we hear from all over the world. But if you're in the Chattanooga area, you need to be at church in Jesus' name. But <laughs> Come on, we love our online audience in Jesus' name. Uh, but, you know... We have our list of excuses. We, we can't do this. We can't do that. Uh, you know, I'm just too tired to, to, to study tonight, and I'm too tired. Well, I'll make it up next week. Come on, I'm no, I know I'm not the only one that's dealt with this. I, I'll, read, I, I'll read six chapters tomorrow. I'm just too tired. But yet we can watch a movie. It just sparked my interest. I can't turn... We can get another little thing called a distraction. We have about a two-second two second mentality. We're not entertaining. Distractions. I'm telling you, the biggest enemy this generation has is distractions. 
The biggest enemy that this generation has is we can't hear the voice of God because the enemy has sent so many distractions to pull our gaze and pull our attention away from him that we're so distracted that we can't focus in on what he's saying, much less hear his voice or see his face or, or know what he's telling us to do because we're so distracted by the entertainment of this world. I'm not against entertainment. I'm not against, uh, you, you know, watching a movie or, or doing these things. Hear me. But I am saying when when we put that before we put God, we're out of order. That means we're hanging out of the pool saying, I wish I could be healed. I wish I could be made whole. But this is just too good. I enjoy all these people around me. See, I'm not even the worst case here. To Brother Rob over there, I'm the hero of the group. I just got a little bit of disease. But Jesus comes and interrupts this, and he says to him, Will thou be made whole? Verse 7, the impotent man answered and said, Sir, I have no man. Come on, man's not going to give you this breakthrough. Can I tell you this morning, I serve notice, man has going to have no part of your miracle. He's going to have no part of your breakthrough. I know you think man's going to do it for you. The government's going to do it for you. A spouse is going to do it for you. Oh, but man's not going to have any part because it's going to be all God. The impotent man answered him, sir, I have no man. When the water is troubled to put me into the pool. Now notice this, this man wants somebody else that's halt, withered, or lame to go pick him up and say, I discern that the waters are troubled. I'm going to pick you up, brother, and put you into the water. Now, he needs a miracle himself. Forget you, I got to get in. <laughs> There's no man. You know, we can c come up with creative uh, excuses. Come on, I hear them all the time. <laughs> Let's get back to the word. I was going to go somewhere, but we're going to get back to the word. Sir, I have no man where the water is troubled to put me in the pool. But while I'm coming, I'm on my way. While I'm coming, another steppeth down before me. Have you ever had somebody interrupt your miracle and your breakthrough? I, I think about the man, Jairus, who's on his way. His daughter is dying, and he has Jesus coming to his house. But the woman with the issue of blood, she touches the hem of his garment, and Jesus stops and stands still and says, Who's touched me? I felt virtue flow out of me. Who touched me? Now, if I'm the man, J. Iris, I'm like, woman, back up. <laughs> I, I, I'm with Jesus right now. And my little girl needs a breakthrough. She needs a miracle. She, she's really sick. So you get yours later. Me and Jesus are going off. Y'all don't judge me because you know y'all would think the same thing too. You, you, you deal with somebody's children and you're going to get, you're going to get desperate enough. Hallelujah. But he was interrupted, but then the little girl died. I don't have time to preach that. That's another message. The little girl died, but G he said to J. Iris, come on, still believe. Just believe is the words the King James says. Just believe. I can just picture him saying, come on, we're going to the house. Come on, I, I know they say it's over. The messenger came and said it's over. Just believe. Just believe I am the word. I am the resurrection and the life. But this, this man says, while I'm coming, another step down before me. Have you ever felt like you were running behind and everybody else is running ahead? Jesus saith unto him, rise, take up thy bed and walk. Rise. Take up thy bed and walk. I hear the Holy Spirit saying to you this morning, it's time to rise. But I can't, God. You don't understand. It's been 38 years. How am I going to rise up? I, I, I'm, I'm around Brother Rob over here, and he, he looks at me and thinks I'm great because I'm just a little bit infirmed. I, I like everybody around here. No, God says, it's time to rise. It's time to rise. I don't know who's been in a low place, but I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, it's time for you to rise up out of the low place. It's time for you to rise up out of the ashes. It's time for you to rise up out of the attack. It's time for you to rise up what tried to cripple you in life. It's time to rise up out of the circumstances you've been in. It's time to rise up from everything that oppressed you. It's time to rise up. And he says, not, he didn't stop there. He said, rise up. Oh, I love T.D. Jakes when he said this. He said, real ministry will challenge you to do something you cannot do. 
See, that's why in the giving this morning, I, I challenge you to stretch. Why? Because some people, that was an act of faith. For many of us, it was an act of faith to give. And for those of you, it wasn't, see me after the service because we need to stretch. <laughs> but, but it was an act of faith. Because real ministry will challenge you to new heights. Real ministry will challenge you to go beyond your safety zone. Real ministry will tell you rise up when you're sitting there lame. And you're saying for 38 years I couldn't do it. But now is your season. See, I, I sense a divine shift in the atmosphere this morning. And some of you have been dealing with things for a long time. But I hear the Lord saying the waters are troubled. Rise up. Rise up. And then he doesn't stop there. He says, take up your bed and walk. Now, this man's been 38 years on the bed. 38 years on the bed. I would think no physical therapy. Think about this. Put it in practical terms. If you're 38 years on your bed and, and you're not having physical therapy, he probably had bed sores. He probably, uh, uh, his muscle tone had probably gone. But Jesus looks at him and said, will you be made whole? Do you really want it? And the man said, he had excuses. Well, somebody jumps in front of me. I have no man to help me. See, God, Jesus was saying to him, what I'm going to do, it doesn't have to do with man. And I'm telling you this morning here at Ramp Church, what God is doing does not have to do with man. It does not have to do with your bank account. It doesn't have to do with what you're looking at in the natural. He said, what I am going to do is going to be supernatural. I am bypassing the natural realm and you're coming into a supernatural season. You are coming in. Can you discern that the waters are troubled? Can you see that God has dispatched angels on assignment to to stir the waters this morning. See, we're not at a pool, but we are at a pool of the Spirit. And he is saying, get ready for a fresh wave of revival. Get ready for things to begin to happen so suddenly. I prophesy in the Amos 9 season so quickly, so suddenly, your head is about to swim. Come on, all things all at once. I don't know who's been on delay. I don't know who's been in a condition for many years. God can do in one instance what you could not do for a lifetime that's the God that we serve and he said rise up take up thy bed and walk see I love Jesus because he didn't just tell him to rise up but then he says and take up your bed and then I want you to walk he gave him a threefold instruction verse 9 and immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. Now I love that Jesus healed on the Sabbath. Because he was just making religious devils mad. He was like, I, I, you know what? They say you can't pick up anything on the Sabbath day. They care more about their legalism than they do this man who's been at the, the pool for 38 years. They're mad that he's carrying his bed. And let me tell you, there's going to be some people that get mad when you start carrying your bed of deliverance. They're going to say, why do they think they're so special? Well, don't they remember where they are from? Who do they think they are? But I'm telling you, I'd rather be carrying my mat and make everybody else mad at me than be laying on the bed of infirmity, being laying on the bed of, uh, of sin and compromise. Come on, somebody. I'd rather somebody else be jealous, somebody else be envious. I learned a long time ago, you can't make everybody happy. You might as well walk into what God has promised you because there are going to be those that whisper. If you do nothing, they're still going to be talking. If you do everything, they're going to be talking. So just let them talk on and carry your bed. Just say, oh, I was bound to this, but guess what? I've been set free. Guess what? This may make you mad, but Jesus came to me. Why? Because the waters of revival, the waters of miracle, the waters of deliverance, the waters of breakthrough has been stirred. See, I came for somebody that has discernment in the spirit, that can discern the times and the seasons. They say, I sense the troubling of the waters. I sense the troubling of the waters. I'm going to jump in. And he says, take up your mat. Take up your bed and walk. 
And it says, and immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And the same day was the Sabbath. Verse 10. The Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, it is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. Verse 11. He answered them, he that made me whole, the same said unto me, take up thy bed and walk. Then asked they him. Come on, this is King James. Stay with me. Then they asked, asked they him, what man is that which said unto thee, take up thy bed and walk? And he that was healed wist not who it was. He didn't know who it was. For Jesus had conveyed himself away, a multitude being in that place. And in other words, Jesus hid himself. He knew that the Pharisees, he knew that the religious sect was going to be mad. He had wisdom. Verse 14, afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon thee. Now, I want you to look at that word whole. Behold, thou art made whole. That's an all-inclusive word. It means you're not just healed in your body. It means you're delivered from sin. It means you're delivered from addiction. It means you're delivered from everything that tried to bind you. In other words, he was converted to a believer on Jesus. When God does something, when Jesus does something, he says, I forgive you. Now, don't sin again. Turn from your sin. That's called repentance. He said, I make you whole. That word uh, it can be translated, nothing missing, nothing broken. I love that definition of it. He said, there's going to be nothing missing, nothing broken. He says, I don't do it halfway. That's why the, when that woman in the prayer line said to me, I just want healing in this area. I don't want healing in that area. I said, I can't pray for you because you're not draining my anointing because there's people up here who are at the pool expecting a breakthrough. They sensed and discerned the troubling of the waters. You're playing games with God. I got to move on. See, some of us have been playing games with God, but I hear the Lord saying, those that discern the angel that would come troubling the waters or stirring the waters is what that meant. Then the first one in would jump in and receive. See, now we are under a new covenant. So anyone who discerns the trouble, it doesn't have to be the first one in. It can be anybody that says, I might be the last one in. But I discern the stirring of the waters, the waters of revival, the waters of healing, the waters of breakthrough. Now listen, I think it's very important. I, I want to read you this real quickly. In the early church, this comes from the Perry Stone uh, Study Bible. In the early church and the Jewish traditions, one of the seven archangels was an angel of healing, identified as Raphael, meaning God heals. In Exodus 15, 26, God said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. The Lord, that Lord that healeth is Jehovah Rapha. The Hebrew word Rapha, meaning to heal, that name Rapha contains in the root word to heal. So in other words, it's taught or believed that it was uh, the angel, archangel Raphael that would come down and stir the waters. But now we have Jesus who is Jehovah Rapha. We don't have to wait for only an angel. Although I heard the Spirit of the Lord speak to me that he was dispatching angels to stir the waters of revival. See, I believe they stir up an atmosphere of faith. I believe that ministering angels begin to stir an atmosphere of faith to release it. But I hear the Lord saying that Jesus, Jehovah Rapha, is stepping in on the scene. And he has come to make you whole. Not only heal your body, but heal your mind deliver the captive and set the captive free he said not only that but i'll make you whole in your finances i'll make you whole in your job with your marriage in different situations he said i want you whole nothing missing nothing broken but he's looking for somebody he's looking for somebody that can discern the troubling of the waters see this morning you don't have to leave here like you came you don't have to leave here in that broken condition that you came in with. I know that's not great grammar right there. My mom teaches me all the time, don't end with the preposition. But however, that, that, speaks, that speaks real to me right there. You don't have to leave with that same condition. He said the waters are being stirred. He spoke to me this morning. 
Actually, yesterday I was down here praying, and I heard the Holy Spirit so clearly say, read the chapter before the man being healed. So I read the chapter, and it was about the woman who was at the well. And in my Bible, I don't have that Bible up here, but in, in the Bible I was reading it in, it was the story of the thirsty Jesus. That's what it said. The story of the, instead of the woman at the well, it was the story of the thirsty Jesus. And I read that story, and then I read this about the, the, the waters being stirred. And he told the woman, if you drink of this well, you will thirst again. But the water that I have, you will never thirst again. And then I read this story, and he spoke to me, and he said, Andrew, I'm troubling the waters right now in this season. For those that will be able to discern it, they will jump in, and they will never thirst again. So not only will you jump in the waters for healing, for breakthrough, but I hear him saying, drink of the waters that are being stirred. He said, I want to fill you to overflow. And he said, not only is it going to overflow in your life, but it's going to overflow to your family. It's going to overflow to those in the workplace with you. It's going to overflow to all those that you come in connection with. Come on, the Bible says that he raises up the fivefold. Why? For the equipping of the saints, for the working of, uh, of the ministry. See, we've all been drafted into ministry. You say, well... I do this. I'm in sales. I do. No, you're in ministry. You're in the army of God. The reason I am here right now on Brainerd Road is not so I can perform for you. I would go into another vocation if that was the, 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 the situation. I, I'm here to equip you so that when you go out... You're equipped with a word and an anointing that you can begin to, to, to spread the works of God. So he said, uh, I'm equipping you for that. He said, those that will drink of this water that's being stirred right now, it's the living water of God. It's the waters of revival. But I'm telling you, the Lord spoke to me right here in this room yesterday when I was praying. He said, Andrew, begin to pray that my people will have discernment and they will begin to discern when the water are troubled. They won't satis be satisfied with staying around the waters. Oh, I'm going to get around this one. I'm going to get around that one. And oh, it's not good. They're overflowing. But I'm still, I I'm still laying here on my bed because I love where I'm at right now. No. I'm praying. I came here today to stir up a hunger inside of you. I came here to stir up a discernment inside of you to where you say, oh, I discern. There's the, the stirring of the waters. If Jesus did it for that man, he will do it for me. And don't you let religious people talk you out of it. Don't you let religious people tell you, oh, you didn't receive anything from God. That's just a bunch of emotion. That's just a bunch of high. The devil is a liar. When God starts moving, guess what? Your emotions start responding to how God moves. But I'm telling you today, he said, I want to make you whole. He said, this water, this living water, see, the stirring of the angels was Old Testament. Only one. And that was by the grace of God. But now since the spotless lamb died on the cross, whosoever will can drink of him. So my message to you this morning is to wake up. The waters are being stirred. Wake up. Whosoever will can jump into the water. I believe you're in this room, not by mistake or by happenstance or by coincidence. But you are here this morning by divine appointment. I can hear. I can sense. I discern the stirring of the water. And God is saying to you, will you jump in or will you have a list of excuses why it's not possible? Well, that's for somebody else. That's for, that's for them. They, they deserve I don't deserve it. I break that spirit of condemnation off of you in the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus washes you and makes you whole. 
He says it's time to jump into the waters. Come on, musicians, I want you to begin to play.